Hey, this is Todd, and I'm talking about internet gaming maxims. Be wary of them. You know, appreciate where they come from, but both be wary of them. I saw a Matt Colville video the other day where he talked about splitting the party, and he was basically going counter a lot of the advice that you'll, you know, read on the internet, sort of maxim, never split the party. And he talked about how he played a game, I think, or maybe he, he refereed a game, where they split the party and it made sense and it worked to do what everything was supposed to do. And therefore he thought that, you know, not necessarily under every circumstance, but that under certain circumstances, splitting the party was fine. I think that video and that idea illustrates a lot of what I'm going to talk about today, which is that when you're reading about advice online or certain things that people generally hold to be true, or at least, you know, the majority of people tend to be true. A lot of it stems from individuals experience with their games. And so a lot of people who have, who will tell you, hey, never split the party, have probably had really bad experiences when they've split the party. And so then, you know, you take that experience and you try to learn from it and you think, boy, that was a really bad idea. We shouldn't do that again. And so you get never split the party. Same thing with, again, Matt Colva held a video on, hey, having an evil character. And of course, that's one of the other things you'll read about a lot of people saying, if you're in a, you know, good party, don't make an evil character. Why do a lot of people say that? Because a lot of people have had really crappy experiences when one person's decided to go rogue with an evil character in a good party. Does that mean that it can never work? No, because you'll also hear people saying, well, hey, I did this in my party and it worked. So what do you do when you're going to find maybe a lot of people, at least individual voices going in one direction, and then maybe a lot of other individual voices or maybe some voices from people you respect telling you to go in another direction, all about these things that are saying opposite things, or if not opposite then maybe one saying never do it. And some people saying, yeah, you can do it sometimes, you know, which way do you go? I think when you're choosing which way do you go, I think the number one thing you have to do is know your table. The players around you, the GM you're going to be playing with, if you're not the GM, you have to know them because that's really going to deter determine the success if you're either going with or going against the grain of some of the suggestions. I think... And I fall into this myself. I think oftentimes I think of the bad experiences I've had when something happens or perhaps I'm looking at of all the possibilities if we're going to try something, here's the worst one. Then I would say, you know, splitting the party, boy, the worst that can happen is pretty damn awful. So maybe you shouldn't do it. Of course, that doesn't discount the fact that you can do it and have some amazing things happen. And it can be really fulfilling or, depend, you know, whatever kind of game you're playing or it can be really effective it can do a lot of things, right? But maybe I speak from that worst case scenario point of view and some other people speaking from very positive experiences. But all that is really contingent on your table. When you're playing with your friends or you're playing with, it's probably easier when you're playing with your friends because you know them and you, you know what their tendencies are. And when you're playing with a table and you get to learn, learn with them and you become knowledgeable with everybody's quirks and what they're good at, their strengths, their weaknesses, how they like to play, and then it's a lot easier to, to do some of these things when, on the other hand, you're just going with a, a random table that you just joined at Roll20. You don't know anybody. You don't know how they play. It'll be a lot more difficult. I think that when you're thinking about to go against the grain with some kind of technique, it really is important to know who you're playing with. I would say maybe hew more towards the conventional wisdom when you don't know the table versus dig into it when you know a little bit more. And of course, it never hurts to just talk this stuff through with your table. If you're thinking of splitting the party, talk through. Some people, as Matt Colville mentioned in his video, are just not uncomfortable with some of these things. Some people don't want to play in a party that has one evil person in it, right? They just don't want that kind of conflict at their table. Uh, and I get it. Sometimes, you know, hey, look, I want to play. I just want to play as a group. I just want to get through it. I don't want to be worrying about the thief, right? Particularly since if I don't know this person, is he going to be that kind of the really lowest common denominator evil character and, and, and just pickpocket me when I turn around or steal stuff from me while I'm sleeping or decide to backstab me in combat for no reason because they're evil, right? Is that the kind of evil I'm playing? Like, I, I don't want to worry about that. That's annoying, and it, I would be in a lot of circumstances where I would think if I was just going up to a table at a, at a gaming store or Roll20, and they're like, hey, do you mind if I play this evil guy? I'd probably be like, yeah, I mind. I've seen too much. I don't know you. This is not something I want to get involved with. However, if it's one of my friends we've been playing for a long time, and he's like, hey, man, I'd like to play this evil character, then I have faith that this person's going to do something 
Right. That they're going to, if they're going to do something, it's going to be some long con that will tie in with everything going on. And then whatever will happen will happen. And that can be a lot of fun. And it can be fun as, you know, from my end, maybe I'm trying to, how can I stop them from doing this without just outright killing them the first day they show up? You know, how can I try, try to use my own things to figure out what he's doing? They're trying to figure that out. It, it, it can be, you know, it can be a lot of fun, but we have to both be on board with that. It's not something I think you could just throw out there and not know your table and then come back and say, I don't understand why were people frustrated with me? Cause I was playing evil or I don't, I don't know why they didn't, they didn't want me to people's experiences matter. The table matters. So know your table. Usually there's a reason why most people are saying don't split the party. And it doesn't mean you can never do it. I don't think you should take anything on the internet, any kind of advice and say, Oh, well this guy on the internet told me I shouldn't do it. So I should never do it. Right. But it's kind of like art. I think, you know, you go to art school, you take art classes. They're going to tell you all the do's and don'ts. Does it mean you should never break them? No. But I think they always say, I remember somebody saying, and it always seemed apt to me, that you should know the rules before you break them. Because some rules you can break to great effect. Some rules you're going to break and then you're going to look at it and you're going to understand why that rule was there in the first place. Because breaking it doesn't lead to a good result. Learn everything and then come up in your own mind, okay, this is a time I can split the party. Or in this instance, I can ha- I can have an evil character. I think another one is the sort of dreaded you know, DM NPC, the sort of player that's being playing player character, but it's played by the DM. And I know when I see this stuff come up, I almost always say sometimes with some preface, sometimes without, Hey, don't, don't do it. Right. But it can be hard. You could be the guy that's the forever jam and you want to play a, a ranger, a bard, whatever you want to play a character. So, you know, why not play it? Can it never be done and not be annoying? No, of course you can do it and, and not be annoying. But I think it takes, it takes a lot of skill and it, and it takes uh, it, and it can be hard. Right. And I think a lot of people, again, have had bad experiences when I was a kid in high school playing. I think it was Marvel TSR's Marvel superheroes game. No, sorry. It kind of morphed into that, but we started out. It was Twilight 2000 and it's just me and one other guy. And we would take turns GMing and we each had our own PC. And when he was GMing me, I would always send his PC to do stuff because I knew his PC would never fail. Because I just knew that he liked this guy too much to ever send him out with a chance that he would fail or get killed or something else. So whenever I really want to get something done, I'd be like, hey, man, you send I'm going to send you out there. You're going to go off and do that. And I knew that he's going to he's going to do it right. It was just an easy way because I was really part of the joy of that really wasn't going through individual missions so much as we were building up this whole thing. We we sort of had this escape from New York kind of thing, but we sort of took it over and we had our headquarters in the Empire State Building, all this kind of crazy stuff we were doing, which was fun. And that was more important to me than me having the visceral thrill of going out and completing a mission. So I would always send his guy out and his guy would always win. Right. But most games you want to go out and you want to do stuff. It's very easy when you have a DM NPC or the DM PC for that character to start to kind of hog the spotlight a little bit for them to sort of take over for them to start. It's really hard to keep separate, right? Because as a player, you don't know what's going on inside the GM's mind. You may have an idea, you may have theories, you may whatever, but you're kind of working as part of that ex- exploration of everything that's happening. As a GM, you know what's happening. You know what's around every bend, you know what's around every corner, and it can be really difficult to not start to use that particular DMPC to sort of lead the party where you want them to go, right? And and I think in, in some early version of early version, early one of Matt Colville videos, he talks about how he was playing a one-on-one session and there was an NPC and he had to really stop that player from relying on the NPC to make decisions because they looked at that NPC as sort of a window into the, into the GM's mind, right? So if you think that can happen with a normal NPC, I think it's even more apt to happen when you have the DM PC, because again, my character, I built them. I wanted to play them. It's the, the, the current love of my life. I'm not going to want to throw them into harm's way. So if I can go left or we can go left, we can go right down. The right way is 800 slimes that I packed into a room. And as soon as we enter the doorway, they're going to drop on us from all directions. And it's going to be a really hard to do. And on the right is sort of the way out. And maybe there's a treasure room on the way, whatever. They may ask me, Hey, DMPC, which way should we go? I might not even be trying to do it on a purpose, but maybe, Ooh, I really like this guy. Oh, we should, we should go. I'm going to maybe, maybe just, you know, absentmindedly point them the way that I want them to go, the way that's towards the treasure and the exit, as opposed to the other way, right? It can be difficult. It can be difficult with regular PCs. With a DMPC, it's it's even more so because you really care about that character because you want to, to play them. 
So I always say, hey, don't do it. Because even if you want to say, I can do all these things, I can separate my mind. The thing is, is you have a lot enough going on, right? And I don't think you can really, if you may say you could separate your mind, you can't. You can't experience being a player when you know all this stuff from the DM side. There's just two very different experiences. So I would say, hey, no, don't do not do it. Just make, but you know, I, I'm not against having, obviously having NPCs. And in my the game that I play, which is a uh, Lamentations of the Flame Princess play by post, it's an OSR game, old school party's got a ton of hirelings. What I will always do is if they come to and they try to ask advice on where to go, they either, the hirelings will just defer. Hey man, you're the boss. You tell me which way to go. Or I'll either roll randomly or I will have them sometimes deliberately say what's where not to do because I want to build into them. Hey, don't trust these guys because you think they're my voice. Don't buy what they're selling just because you think you're getting some kind of insight into my thinking because I know the map. And I can look at it and I can say, boy, they really should go left and not right. Yeah, but if they're going to ask me all the time, then I'm going to have the guys send them the wrong way so that they, they train off of that and that they understand that these NPCs understanding is imperfect. Call, you know, you put up a, whatever they call it, a Chinese wall or something, right? And that's easier to do when with these NPCs because I don't care if they, I will shed a tear for them if they die it's not a big deal but if this was i was longing to play a ranger and i finally decided to put a ranger in the party so i can play them i'm a lot less likely to send them off to certain doom to prove a meta point about not trusting npcs i'm a lot more likely even if i'm not trying to to say hey this is the way we should go so again another one of those maxims i think it's a good one that's you know for the most part I think you're always going to find somebody who's going to be able to say, hey, I pulled it off and it was amazing and it worked great. And I'm sure it did. I'm not uh, disputing that at all. It definitely, you can play it the right way. You can have a party that doesn't mind. You know, I think if I was playing in a party and I saw this character show up and I kind of had an inkling, it was some kind of uh, sort of DM thing that they wanted to play. I might get a little irritated with that just because of my thought process of even if they're not trying to, hey, are they trying to steal the spotlight? Are they trying to? insert themselves i mean they have the whole world to play do they really need to put a guy in the party you know these are things that i'm thinking and i'm you know right or wrong might might bother me some other people they're going to be good with it and go you know again know your table but i think there's a reason why that maxim came up it's just not something that you necessarily have to take as being you know a thousand percent true all the time i think another one that i've seen come up again it's one that i would generally espouse but not necessarily all the time is using and i talked about this in the video about setting up your you know, your big bad evil guy is TP, TPKing the party as sort of a plot point. Hey, I want to do something. I want to kill the whole party and then resurrect them. Or I want to kill them to prove a point. Or I want to kill them to show X, Y, or Z. And this is one of those things, again, it just seems to me like, man, it's a bad idea. But just because the times that I've experienced similar things that's been bad doesn't mean that it can't be done well. I think that when you're looking at ideas like this and, and really any of the ideas and maxims that I've kind of thrown out here as sort of exemplars is that if a whole lot of people are telling you, man, this is a bad idea or here's how all these ways this can go wrong. Should it dissuade you from trying it? Yes and no, right? It should give you pause. If you go and a hundred people are telling you, no, 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 don't do it. Don't do it. And maybe one or two people are going, yeah, do it. Maybe that should give you hesitation. But I think really what it should do, maybe beyond just a simple like reflexive, okay, I won't do it, is to really think about why you're doing it. Think about how you can do it. What's your method going to be for doing it? Are there other ways you can get the same effect? Because I think looking at it from the other perspective, and I think this is true whether you're a, a player or, or a GM. You know, I think I really hate when people say, well, this is what my character would do. You're the, the character is the puppet. You're the puppet master. You pick what you want to do as a player, and then you justify that through the character. You want to go south, and your character has a fear of going south. You figure out a way for your character to go through with it. I think playing it, at least when you're playing D&D, these types of games, you're not playing it to sort of fulfill, you know, internal character struggles. There are some games I think are set up more where you really, you really are trying to play out the tension between what your character is and what you are. But I think for the most part, you're playing a D&D type game. You're really playing to have this adventure out in space. And that things that your character would do is really determined by you as the player ultimately. And then you figure out how your character makes it happen. So if you need to figure out, hey, he hates kobolds and a kobold just joined the party. He has to figure out that not 
I think, the other way where you go, well, my character would fight the kobolds. So I have to fight the kobolds. I think that's the wrong way to go about it. But that little thing aside, when you're looking at a TPK, and again, there are many things like this, just, just one example, think about it from the other side. So just to go back to what I just said, hey, if I'm the player and my character hates kobolds and another, another player just joined the party and has a kobold, on the one hand, could I justify it? just attacking it on site because it's a kobold and my hair character hates kobolds? Yes. Yes, I could. That's the, that's easy. That's like the low watermark. That is the, the, the floor, right? Yes, that is the easiest decision I could make. But I'm also impacting that player's fun in a big way and potentially the whole group's fun in a big way. So can I come up with something else? Can I take the player aside and say, hey, listen, I got a hatred of kobolds, but maybe we can figure out some way work it off. Maybe we can have a little moment, do this, or maybe with the GM, hey, I know I hate kobolds, but those kobolds I hated were all of the southern tribe and this guy's of the northwestern tribe. And I do something like that, right? You figure out a way to make it work to make everybody having a better experience. And it's the same thing with something like a TPK. Yeah, you can, of course, it's, if you kill the entire party, that's probably going to make some kind of point about whatever it is they're up against or whatever moment they're having, for sure. I, no question, but do the players enjoy being wiped out like that? Like, how do they feel about it? If I was a player and I walked into a situation where that was happening, how would I enjoy it? Probably not that much. Probably I would be annoyed, particularly because I think oftentimes they will, it'll be pretty obvious that you're killing the party, right? You know, particularly with you're playing some sort of narrative campaign. If you go into some place and something just starts wiping you out, you know you didn't have a chance at it. You know you didn't. And so you're just looking at it like, wow, the guy's just going to wipe us out. You know, you're going to see, it's going to be very bold, bald, and transparent what's happening. It's probably not going to be fun. So does that mean I should never do it? No. But let me think about what I'm trying to do. Is there another way I can do that that is going to work better? And if the answer is yes then maybe I should do that instead. Maybe I should try it, see if that works. I can always try the TPK at a later moment. I think for a lot of these things, right, you want to use it at a moment that's really powerful. Split the party everywhere. You just have to have random bad, bad things happening, but there may be moments where you're going to want them to split the party. There may be moments where you've planned some kind of boss battle where they have to split the party. If you want to sort of build up and maybe have a moment with Gollum at Mount Doom where the fact that he's kind of evil and turning actually saves the day, you can do that, but you have to really be thoughtful about it. You know, the same thing with a TPK. If you want to have this sort of TPK moment and have it be meaningful and not just annoying, it has to really be thoughtful and really be thought out so that there's enough going on where the party, the players will see this moment as more than just, boy, you're just jamming us down, putting our you know noses in the dirt to make something else look good. You know, same thing with a DMPC. If you build up this PC, they're, they're a part of the group, they feel like it, and then they die off at some moment, that can be really strong. Or they turn into the bad guy. They do something else. This, these are all very possible things, but you don't want them to be an annoying construct along the way. You want them to be appreciated. All these things work because the character itself works. You have to put thought into it. And recognizing the pitfalls of doing these, these things to you can keep you on point with when you are going to break these rules, when you are going to go against the grain, so to speak, of what most people will advise that you understand what's happening so that you can avoid making this, you know, DMPC the center of attention or taking away the spotlight from your, from your characters. You can avoid using a TPK for a lesser moment that maybe you don't need to use them for. You can avoid being really annoying as an evil character and making it into something that's going to be meaningful in whatever kind of game you're playing. So I really appreciate the Colville videos where he, he does give the kind of against the grain advice. But I think it's important when you're reading his advice or you're listening to my advice or, you know, anybody's advice out there that we're all shaped by our experiences. And of course, if you have a, had a good experience with a certain concept or idea, you're going to kind of embrace it, right? Where if you've had a lot of bad experiences or even one really bad experience, with it, I know I've had mine with sort of the TPK kind of uh, element. I had a really bad experience with that in a game in college. Like I said, I had my friend whose DMPC could never fail, which didn't bother me as far as I was able to get things done. But it certainly was something that at the time, I, I, I know I didn't love it. I just, because I had different kind of world building goals, 
I kind of used it to my advantage in that way, but it wasn't something that I loved. I kind of rolled my eyes when it first started happening. It's like, oh, geez, of course it's going to be like the hero. That's his guy kind of thing, you know? And it's certainly, if I was playing now as an adult, I would find it annoying. So, you know, I'm talking from, you know, my experiences. And when you're on the internet and you're in Reddit or you're somewhere else, it's really hard to gauge what people's experiences are and why they feel like the way they do. But I think oftentimes there is some element of, you have this broad base of experience and a lot of people have had bad experiences with these things. There's probably reasons why they're cautioning against it, but you should always think of your own table and your own players first and think about how they will take it, how they will like it. And just, if you're going to, if you look at all that, if you think about how your table is going to like it, you think they're going to be okay with it. And you can't think of other ways to do it that might avoid some of these the same way then use the advice you're going to get to be thoughtful as to how you, how you handle it, how your uh, execution of a particular concept is. That's really what it should be all about because there's no rule that can't be broken. You know, everybody's game is everybody's game and you're not bound to other people's experiences. You're bound to what happens at your table. So just use everyone's advice to inform your decision, inform how you're going to do it, and then execute. And then, you know, hop online and tell everybody how it went the good, the bad, or the ugly, because even if the worst things happen, you just move forward, forward. And, and, and maybe it can help you in the future because everyone has these bad things and, you know, you never know for sure until you try. So that's, that's what experience is. So, you know, you go out and get it. If you enjoy videos like these, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. It helps me out a lot. I also have a Patreon if you'd like to support the show in a different way. Thanks for watching.